And in Mark's Gospel, the seventh chapter and verse 24 to verse 30 is our reading for this morning. When you have it, say, I have it. Mark 7, um, 24 to 30. I'm going to read it from the New King James. There he arose and went into the region of Tyre and Sodom, and he entered a house and wanted, not, and wanted no one to know it, but he could not be hid. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him. And she came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Seraphonician by birth. And she kept also him, I'm sorry, and she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, let the children be filled first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to little dogs. And all the people said, amen. amen. My subject this morning is breaking news. Jesus is in the house. Breaking news, Jesus is in the house. <clears throat> this story often, when I read it, surprises me of the, the setting that this particular woman was in, and many of us can identify with trouble in our home. Don't know how it happened, but it was in our house. Whenever you have trouble in your house and left unmanaged or left not dealt with. It will get worse before it gets better. <clears throat> In this case, her daughter was demon possessed. You can't hang around demons too long for they attract other demons. Now it's just not a demon in the kitchen. It's the demon in the whole house. You have to be careful the things that you play with and the things that you open yourself up to that seem so innocent, but you gotta know a demon when it's a demon. <clears throat> now, right now I know the devil's getting scared, he's getting nervous, cause I'm talking about his demons. Well, he talk about the saints. So I might as well go and give him a little bit of something to talk about. The problem had grown to the place that her daughter was taken by this spirit. Matthew speaks about it in the 15th chapter and he brightens it up a little more. So I'm going to go in and out of both Mark and Matthew, just speaking to Matthew's 15th chapter about this particular story. But Mark lays it out and Mark is more of the descriptive person that is going to give you things to look at. He's more of the uh, uh, broader writer. Matthew is going to walk, walk, walk and talk to the Jews where Mark is going to talk more practical to the point that he picks him up by this region of Tyra. But Matthew says that he was by the border before going into the region of Tyra and Sodom. He didn't go into Tyra and Sodom, but he was near the region of Tyra and Sodom. And in that area, he enters into a house. Tyra and Sodom was a part of an outside, a Gentile uh, territory. And Jesus had no dealings to do with Gentiles because he came only to the lost sheep of Israel and to the Jews. So he came close and he enters into a house. Uh, that little piece of the message right there is that I don't care if Jesus is in Pahrump, if you know he's in the house, you get yourself on down to Pahrump. He may not be coming this close, but wherever he's at, get as close as you can to where he is. Ah, that right there. <laughs> so here he is in this place and he meets this Greek woman, uh, the woman of Canaan, by Canaan birth. And Canaanites, you know, did, gave Israel a hard time all the time. So he didn't want anything to do with the Canaanites. And he's talking about the setting of the table where Brett was at. And she begins to ask him about healing her daughter. And the Bible says he answered her not a word. Um, it's like praying and not hearing anything back. And he does not speak to her. He ignore, ignored her and did not answer her. But she went on further to cry out to him even the more. 
And he told her that little dogs eat the crumbs. Now she said, little dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the tables. And Jesus said, it's not meat to give the children's bread to, to dogs. Meaning that she was a Gentile, not calling her a, a dog or a female dog. He was just saying that Your neighbor missed it. What did he do? What did he do? <laughs> However, he put her in her place that she did not belong to the family uh, of, of God. And he said to her for, uh, for this saying, when he, she says, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. He said, for this saying, your daughter is going to be healed. So the story picks up a level of faith in it now because she had faith enough to believe that even though I'm a Gentile and an outsider, I know my faith can get closer to him. Never underestimate your faith. Faith does not just go with a big house or a big car or things blinking. Faith can be as small as a mustard seed of just trusting what God said. And if you put your faith to action, it'll come to pass real quick. Faith is, the, is, is spoken here by the Gentiles of being introduced to the Gentiles. Romans 10, as I said, wait into faith. Romans 10 and 17, it says faith comes by hearing. She heard he was in the house. Faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17, and hearing by the word of God. As faith, as you hear, your faith is being built. This subject this morning is one of faith. She needs to get to Jesus, the problem in her house. And you're hearing a message that poses faith. Hebrews 11 and 6 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And it goes on that he that comes to God must believe that he is and is reward of those who diligently or consistently seek him. So you have to have faith to please God. Matthew 9, 29, Jesus touched the two blind men and told them, it's according to your faith, be it unto you. They believed that he was able to do this, which is open their eyes and give them sight, either spiritually or naturally is what they need. But it was according to their faith. Everyone has a measure of faith. And Paul says to the Corinthians, he says, I want your faith to increase. This woman's faith was not looking for a car or a house or a boo. She wanted the devil out of the house. She just didn't want to sleep another night with cray cray running around the house. Are sleeping with one eye. She's want the devil gone. Anybody in there that's want the devil just gone. I just need to get this demon up off of my, out my house. Then according to your faith, be it, be it unto you. Be it unto you. She, he could not be hid even though he was in the house. So woman wanted her daughter healed from his unclean spirit. She came, the Bible says, and she fell at his feet and began to worship. Now, I'm going to lose a bunch of you right here because you don't have the gravity to know when to make war on the floor. But many of us know there's certain things going to come when you get down on this floor and go face down and be let God go up. In other words, you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. This woman goes face down, she goes into worship, we'll come back to that in a moment. Being a Greek outside, but she understood that he moves, worship, worship, worship moves him, he cannot be denied. Demon possessed daughter. Mark mentions this because he wants us to understand the character of Jesus, that he's able to hear you when you go into worship. He answered and said to her again, it is not good to take the children's bread to throw it to little dogs. She says, yes, Lord, even the little dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Jesus answered and said to her, oh, my God, <laughs> great a faith that you have here for you to speak back to me that even though you know, I know that you know you're an outsider, but yet my faith is pulling on you. Oh, goodness. He says, oh, woman, great is your faith. Your daughter shall be healed. And the daughter was healed in that selfsame hour. Matthew jumps into the story with us, the 15th chapter in verse 22. She begins to cry out, have mercy, O Lord, thou son of David. Son of David puts him, identifying him with humanity. Son of David, not son of God, but he's son of David. He has human feelings and tendencies like you and I. My daughter is severely, Matthew says, demon possessed. This thing is getting worse before it gets better. So I need you to come and make this house call. Breaking news, Jesus is in the house. 
He answered her, he says in Matthew 15, verse 23, 23, he didn't answer a word. And the disciples now, and opposes be the church people in Matthew 15, verse 23, the disciples says, just send her away, for she's crying after us. Have you ever come to church and people think that you are the one that's going to save me? Or you are the one that's going to change my life? It ain't you, it's Jesus. So if I'm getting on your nerves now, wait till he deliver me. I'm really going to get on your nerves. If you don't like the way I'm acting now in church, wait till he bring me all the way out. Then I got some radical people in here that says, I'm not going to wait till it's over. I'm going to shout right now. Oh, God. Look at somebody said, the problem ain't in your house. The problem's in my house. The disciple says, send her away. She's crying after us. Matthew 20, 15, verse 24. And he answered and said, I was not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Matthew 15, verse, I think, 24, 25. And she came and worshiped him back in Mark again, back in Mark, the seventh chapter in verse 25. She came here and began to worship him. And her worship becomes emboldened, where she says, Lord, help me. Whenever the Lord hears the word help, He's like a mother coming for her child that's in trouble. It was not the daughter saying help. It was the mother saying help. And Jesus, as she fell there at his feet and began to worship, it's a powerful thing when you understand the power of worship. What do you do when the word you need won't say a word to you? I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Israel. I came to church. I'm trying to get a word, but the word ain't coming to you. But if you switch over into worship, your eyes and understanding will open up to hear the word of God so clearly because he begins to speak to your aching heart. Worship is an act of extolling God, holding him high, regard in high regards. It's honoring him. It's reverencing him. It's because he is worth it. I worship him. Don't just get caught up on worshiping things. Things come and go. But God is the one that's going to keep your life together after stuff is gone. Don't worship a man, don't worship a woman, don't worship, oh, 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 oh. don't worship a car, don't worship a house, don't worship your money. If you're going to worship anything, thou shalt love the Lord thy God, and him only shall I serve, and I'll only worship him. <laughs> worship is acknowledging the greatness of God, both physically and privately. Worship is saying that publicly or privately, I will hold my hands up and worship God. It comes to a physical expression of praise and reverence and honor and, and you know, in humiliation to yourself, but praise and honor and worship to God. Worship is something that is powerful, I first stated. It realizes how small your problems are when you begin to worship God. How insignificant your problems are as you begin to worship God. The demon ain't left my house, but I'm going to worship God. Still got a problem on the job working with these people, but I'm still going to worship God. Still trying back and forth on these people calling me about something I ain't paid. Don't call me. I ain't got no money. I'm going to worship God. David understood this when his back was against the wall. He understands the power of worship. David was down in Abimelech's house. I'm segwaying over to Psalms 34. You should know it. He says, I'm here in a place where the enemy is up against me and Abimelech is going to put me out or drive me away. The Bible says in Psalms 34, verse 1 through 3, he says, he says in verse 2 and 3, I'm sorry, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord and the humble shall hear of it and be glad. Psalms 34 in verse 3, he's worshiping. He says, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. David is speaking here about being, again, in Abimelech's house, but he's at a place wherein that he's about to be hurt or destroyed or put out. His back is against the wall. He didn't fall on the floor and go crazy. He began to say, uh, my soul will boast in the Lord. You have to see David in the picture that he was a worshiper. So whenever you have a place where you just don't know what to do, just go and boast in on God. Just brag on God, not, not your physical, but your soul, your life, your breathing, your everything. He says, and the humble will hear and be made glad. In other words, if your neighbor began to testify how good God has been, they'll get happy for you. The humble will hear and be made glad. Then he says, oh, magnify the Lord. Now, we know that God is all in all and fill all space and all times. Heaven and heavens cannot contain him. He is omnipresent. He's omnipotent. He's omniscient. He's everywhere 
temporary there at the same time. So how can I make God bigger? He's not saying make God bigger. He said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. In other words, make your problem smaller and let God be bigger. See your problem as being small and God being bigger than your problem. Here it is in verse 1. I like the way I flipped it quickly in Psalms 34 and verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. If you read over in the Old, the Old Testament when David is speaking about this and Abimelech puts him out, he is in the place where the Philistines are about to kill him and the Bible says David began to act insane. He went through a moment of being mad. He was in the manic moment, he was just going crazy. So David got out of himself or he got beside himself in a mental behavior that didn't make sense. Uh, um, he began to, Bible says, scratch on the wall and began to have spittle come out of his mouth. It was crazy. It was just bizarre to see the King David doing this. So it's called that crazy praise. It's that when you just know that I got to be out of my own self. Now, I'm not telling you to act a fool now. David is saying that I have to act, change my behavior at this moment because I'm being attacked by the enemy. Sometimes you have to change your mode of worship. Here you go. It can't just be, oh, bless the Lord. Lord Jesus. No. When you got a demon in your house, you got to turn up the praise a little bit. Oh, some of y'all too Methodist this morning. Look at this. It's my baby. So, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let exalt his name together. Like the woman, David, like the woman, the woman like David began to become a powerful worshiper. Even though she was a Seraphonician by birth, belonging to the enemies of God, I'm about to find that I can become a friend of God because he loves a worshiper. A worshiper can get money when a person that's trying to get money can't get it because I know where the money is coming from. It's not just money. It's just supplying all my needs. Come on, let's try it. Say, Daddy, you know where I'm at. I need your help. These bills are too strong, and these crazy people around me. Daddy, would you come see about me? Oh, Daddy, I need your help this morning. I got a little sickness in my body, and I need this thing to be lifted. Daddy, anybody ever talk to him like he's your daddy? Ah. Uh. I got to close this. Service is over. Here's this woman was saying, get this demon out of my house. My daughter is losing it. Jesus said, I don't want to be bothered with you. I can't take the children's bread to throw it to little dogs. He says, she said, I understand that. But even the dogs eat the crumbs. It fall from the table. I don't want to take the children's place this morning. I just want what's mine. And I'm close enough to the table to get what I need before I leave this house. I don't want what you got. I want what I need. I just need a little bit so I can make it all right out of here this morning. I, I just don't want you to deny me the little bit he left for me. So don't worry about this. You don't even want it. It's just a little bit. But it's just enough for me to get the devil out of my house. I don't need a whole lot of faith. I just need a little faith to get this demon up out my house. Her persistency with Jesus was that she was determined. I'm not leaving this house house sad. I'm going out of this house glad. I came in it with a burden. I'm going out with a blessing. I promise when I leave here, my life is going to switch and be better. The only reason you're not leaving out with anything because you came in full. But I want to talk to somebody and say, Lord, give me just a little bit more. Fill me up 
a little bit more. Persistent and determined, she cried out of her pain to get her promise. She got louder the more she thought about it. She got more indignant the more she thought about it. Jesus looked at her burden and said, this burden is coming off of you today. This thing is about to lift up off your shoulders. I want you to flow with me prophetically and spiritually. Your daughter ain't sick, but maybe you sick. Maybe you need deliverance. Maybe you need a breakthrough. Maybe you need your joy back, your praise back. Maybe you need to get your happy back because that last knucklehead took your car and your happy. Maybe you just need to be delivered from some people. He said, woman, go on your way. Your daughter has been delivered. And it happened in that same hour. I'm glad it's a little past 10. I feel preachy right about now. This is my side. This is my hour. Before I leave her this morning, in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to get what God promised me in this hour. I've been sitting in church all morning, but this is my hour for God to do what only God can do. And I refuse to sit here and not get what he promised me. Look at my say, get out my way. The crumb, the crumb. The, I need my crumb this morning. I need what God. Come on, get on your feet. Watch me as I close. She heard faith. He's in the house. She goes in. Not even supposed to be in there, but she went in. See her with me and Jesus being posed as the podium. And the children are at the table eating. Shamefully, she moves in. Have mercy, my, my daughters. Go away, disciples, send her away. It's a picture of some people coming to church today and you don't feel comfortable in your space because you think everybody around you is perfect. No. And I don't belong here because I don't have the right clothes on. No. Her persistency was that regardless who's in the house, I'm getting to this table. I mean, you may be talking about me if you want to, but I'm getting to this table. Get out of here, you Gentile dog. That's okay. Bow wow. I'm getting to this table. Got there and was agreeable enough to, to, to agreeable enough for Jesus to say that I cannot take that which is the children and give it to dogs. I can't take that little and give it to dogs. She said, yes, Lord. That little crumb, my little daughter. Little big got little and mix it up much. I just want what's mine. But she stayed close enough because he was in the house. And finally, all of a sudden, something fell. It was just enough for her to grab onto it. I pray this morning that something falls. Just enough for you to grab onto it and say, this is my crumb. I'm gonna live the rest of this month and out the rest of the year with this crumb right here. A word of promise. If the loaf could heal the children, then the ingredients is in the bread. It was just enough for her to see a change in her family because she was persistent. Hold your hands up, Father. We bless you this morning. We thank you for your word. As you always do, send it and heal us. I believe you're speaking to someone who's having an emergency in their home or even in their own personal lives. I can't break this habit. This thing is destroying me. I need to get rid of this. I can't keep going around in these circles. Left untreated, it would destroy me. 
So Father, I ask you this morning, give me what I need to break this chain and this stronghold of my life in the name of Jesus. I worship you for who you are. I praise you for what you have done. I exalt you. I extol you high and lifted up. Depression roll off. Sickness roll off. Doubt roll off. Grief roll off. Heavy burdens roll off. Lack roll off. Headaches roll off. Migraines roll off. Whatever has been trying to oppress you, financial worries and concerns roll off in the name of Jesus. And I'll forever be careful to give you the praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Don't clap, don't clap, don't clap. Let's clap twice like this. Hold it, hold it, watch me, watch me. You're gonna do that and say, it's out my house. One, two, three, go. Well, out my house. Let me hear your best praise before I get out of here. Come on, E-Church. Put some hands in the chat. Woo! To the millennials and the alphas and the Gen Zs, that's what Big Mama would do when there's when a rap. It's over. Just clap, clap. That's it. It's done. I don't want to hear another word about it. I don't hear another word about it. I don't hear another word about it. I don't hear another word about it. Talk back to me and say, devil, wrong address, wrong neighborhood, and wrong street. Go home by faith when you walk in your front door, when you go through the garage, wherever you live, but when you walk in, put your hand on the door, door post and say, no demons in this house. No drama in this house, no craziness in this house, no doubt in this house, no fear in this house. This is the house of God. Let me pray for you that are not saved that need to be saved. If you're online, please put in the chat. I want someone to pray for me. But if you're in this room right now, quickly before I relieve my position, I need Jesus Christ in my life, Pastor House. I realize now that you set it up so to let me understand that he's the only one that can change my story to his story. My, thing, my life could be so much better with Jesus. I need to get closer to him. Heads bow quickly. Let me see these hands in just a moment. I want the Lord to, to come and draw me near. Hold your hand up. I want to come nearer to him. I need to be nearer to him. I need to be near. I need to be saved. I need to be strengthened. Build my faith and relationship back up with the Lord. Father, hands are raised now. Hearts are open and turned towards you, I pray. As you see every hand that's raised, every heart that's open, every mind that's set towards you, I pray, God, that you save my sister, save my brother. We cannot come to you except you draw us. So right now, Father, even just the sign of them raising their hands, it's a clear indication that you're drawing them. Let them not leave here or be the same for the rest of their life in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen.